Nirmala ji, thank you so much for giving us this first budget interview to a streaming service and a private news channel. Through this interview, you will reach uh, the length and breadth of the country through all our News 18 channels, CNBC TV 18, CNN News 18, News 18 India, and a slew of digital properties, moneycontrol.com, first post, and news18.com. Thank you so much for this. Uh, my first question, uh, this is your fifth budget. Uh, you were navigating two epochal events in the last couple of years. One was the ongoing pandemic and its impact, and the other was the war in Ukraine. Uh, what I would like to understand from you is, what was going on in the mind of Nirmala Sitharaman, and you know how she was dealing with policymaking in these last five historic years? You're starting with a very difficult <laughs> question because Difficult not for any other reason, but to capture the experiences, the, uh, as they say, anubhav, you know, going through that. And also to look back at it now, when you're probably slightly out of it, is very difficult to describe in, let's say, a short, brief answer. I can understand. But yet, if you have to really capture it, I had no precedent before me to handle such a situation. There were no given templates. There were no examples to follow. And there were no theories which would have worked in such context. So essentially, we were going by continuous conversation with all kinds of stakeholders. Those who have directly some uh, thing to say about the industry and its suffering, MSME and its suffering, or even those who are observing it with a more discerning eye. So we had to engage in conversation continuously with the, all people, take their view, wait for ourselves to see which one is all right, which is more suitable for us, and which is not, yes. and also take courage in saying it may not work out for us in one particular way because eventually somewhere all this has got to be answerable. And uh, therefore, I think I would immensely uh, recall the ways in which Honorable PM led the conversation with us. He would never tire himself from meeting us. He would never say not today. So with all necessary precautions taken for COVID, following the protocol, we would still meet and talk about things. But eventually, whatever has been uh, at that time decided and put out as schemes, one uh, thing which was not so much relevant for dealing with the pandemic itself, but yet had to be done, was not to let go the opportunity to continue the reform process. Yes. So that was carried on. But we may do so many things. We may have a stable leadership, clear-headed leadership, which stands by us and gives us the guidance under the Prime Minister. And we may come up with the uh, proposals and also launch some specific schemes at that time to benefit, to give relief, and so on. Eventually, it is the way in which the people of India have absorbed it all. You know, sub, uh, actually uh, absorbed it uh, and found best ways to go around it with this kind of a sucker which is coming from the government or some hand holding which is coming from the government may not be adequate. But so the credit goes to the people of India for having so. Um, been in clued position with the government's, you know, every decision making and uh, kept pace with it all. And that is why today we, we are where we are. Entirely the way in which people of India have absorbed whatever has been done from the government's side and put it to effect in the ground. You make a very important point. I think you never gave up on reforms in the last so many years. This come what may, pandemic, war in Ukraine, and you know, that, that, that I must concede. Uh, you know, I clearly remember that many experts and economists at, you know, at that time panned the government, panned India, that you know, we were not doing enough for stimulus you know, in the COVID period. 
uh, and I remember they cited examples of Western economies, European economies, saying that you know we should at least give 10 to 20 percent of GDP. You know that's the bare minimum we should do. Uh, now, in hindsight, do you think that it was good to ignore that advice and you know be tight-fisted, and that is showing that is showing up today? Yes, that is why in answering earlier your question, we had to do our homework for every such input which came came in at that time. Oh, why? We could have always said, no, this is what appeals to us and we would have gone ahead. No, but we had to consider every such advice which came in and also go through the depths of what it would mean, how, is it, how, how will it be executed, whether it can really bear the results and so on, only because whether we choose one way or not, we should know why we have not chosen a particular way and be able to justify saying our understanding was this and that's why we didn't take it. Today I have the advantage of looking back at it and say good that I didn't take it because the results would have been very different. But the fact remains that we went through every one of the suggestions with equal open-mindedness and rigor. You know, so Nirvalaji, if I look at this budget, coming to this budget, the central theme, and you know you've elaborated, you've articulated it in your speech subsequently as well, but I would still like to ask this question, that there is a big push to capital expenditure on one hand, on the other you've also given a lot of money into the hands of the middle class and the rich, so that there is a consumption boom. Uh, you know, all this while keeping the fiscal uh, discipline in place, you know, as you had promised, 5.9%, so that's, that's, that's giving some comfort to everyone. Uh, what I want to understand is what are the few outcomes, big outcomes that you're looking at from this budget? If well executed, if uh, the states and the st states and the center work together, I expect tourism to really see a sea change, flow of people coming in both from one other states and also from abroad. Um, it should actually be a good way of you know keeping the economy active if that is going to be this year and also medium term i also see the momentum that pm vikas scheme is going to come up with because what it does at least from the way in which i've done this work on understanding that scheme and to see how best it can be tailored it it touches that segment which is sort of self-employed, which has skills, which may be traditional skills, but which are very productively used. And that itself has a huge market, niche market of its own. If by launching PM Vikas, we will be able to touch upon a large section, not confined to any particular few castes, which go by the description which Vishwakarma. But we, we are including everybody who uses his hand with the, some tools, produces things, that's a huge layer which doesn't get covered under A scheme or B scheme or C scheme. Now we are touching them. We are actually giving that material difference of receiving better attention, better raw, raw material, better marketing, better professionalized way of aggregation and so on with better um, fair uh, rated uh, credit from bank and so on. I think that layer which is uh, remained unseen, untouched till now, but very recognized because of the quality of products that they produce will now make a big difference to us. Equally, the push on green is not going to be any less. In every sector, there's been provisions made in the budget for them to do the transition from depending on fossil fuel, fuel to uh, a renewable energy source-based fuel. And that will touch every walk of life, not just farmers, not just women in household, both from the point of view of user and also producer. You will generate enough power for yourself and be able to also sell it. And the final but most important, I would think, is the way we are going to shake up and also give life to the self-help women's groups which exist in the rural parts of the country. Some states have extraordinarily done well on SHGs in the last few decades. It's not as if they have been formed only today. A couple of decades they've been on the ground. 81 lakh of them groups exist. 
And it is they who we are now trying to aggregate, bring them together like clusters, see what they want to do in terms of production or uh, services. For instance, I just bring in a very private sector example, Lijat, the papad, Lijat papad, after all was a women's somewhat self-help group. Look at the kind of product, the quality, the branding, the, the, the perception about what is legit can always be superior in quality. There's never a compromise on it. And people seek it, even though from the general papad pricing, it is slightly higher in yes. price. But still, people pref prefer it. So like that, SHGs, and I don't want just to end with the uh, papad ma making. It right, should be everything else also. So depending on the skill sets available, the raw material available, we want to make sure that SHGs do come in uh, to benefit from government policy and also through digital marketing, run professionally as well.